I hope you'll excuse the sound of the river in the background here, but I had to come back to this patch of woodland because last year it was a hot spot for both beech nuts and sweet chestnuts. And already with a quick look on the ground, I've already found an absolute whopper of a sweet chestnut. I can't wait to get home and cook it. But of course, we need to get a lot more if we're gonna make something of a meal of it. But I've got a bit of a battle on my hand because up in the branches, I can hear the squirrels moving around and they're busy taking all the best nuts before they even make it down to the ground. And also they're dropping a lot of the nuts on the ground as well. So I might get knocked on the head. Here's one that looks quite promising. Let's see what we've got. Mmm, what looked like a large nut is actually three smaller nuts. So not really worth our time. We'll keep looking. When you're looking under the chestnut tree, we really want to be searching for this sort of thing. It's bright, it's green, it's fresh. These kind of chestnut husks are not going to be worth our time. They're too far gone. These ones haven't been long off the tree. Okay, now here we've got something much more promising. You can see that this husk is all open here, but on this side, it's not open yet. And there's a fair size to it, isn't there? So let's see if we've got something good in here. Ooh, wishing I had my gloves right now. Oh no, frustrating again. There's one, you know, that's passable. We can make use of that. We'll stick that in the risotto. Keep looking. Let's get our eye in on the woodland floor for what we're looking at when it comes to the sweet chestnut leaf. As you can see, it's a pretty sizable leaf, at least as long as my hand, and they can be bigger than this as well. And on the tree, they have some beautiful colors, some oranges, yellows, and those green golds. But once they've fallen, mostly, you're getting this matte brown color, a kind of buff brown. And these large, long leaves with a strong serrated edge are not like anything else you're really gonna see out in the woods. Down on this log stump, I've found more signs of the enemy. It's a squirrel feeding post, and they've clearly been using this vantage point so they can look out for any predators or other danger while they feed on the nuts. We know it's a squirrel feeding point because the chestnut husk has been torn apart across the stump here. It wouldn't have just done that when it fell naturally, so something has been at work on it. And when it goes dark, that's when the mice will come out and they'll get to work on the squirrel's leftovers. I tell you what, it's a frustrating hunt so far because when you find husks that are this large on the ground, devoid of nuts, you know that the tree is definitely producing some very large chestnuts. Again, we just gotta beat the squirrels to them. I can hear them up in the tree. Here's one that looks quite promising. Do you see how it's bursting open as if the case can't contain the nut within? That's a really good sign. And there's a lot of brown showing there, so let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. That's very respectable. And actually, there's another fair size one in there as well. Not bad at all. Finally, something to smile about. Well, these are the best of the nuts I've managed to gather. Um, I'm not going to make a meal out of it on its own, but as an ingredient added to something else, like our mushroom risotto. It's going to be quite nice in there. I'm going to enjoy that. You know, I'm not the world's greatest fan of nuts generally. I tend to avoid them if I'm eating out in a restaurant or cooking at home. But wild nuts I have got into and sweet chestnuts are my favourite. I confess I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. So what do we do with these things? Well, roasting them on the open fire is the obvious one. There's a whole song to tell you how to do it but you can do that in a dry pan, or even I've seen it done on a spade over hot coals. They'll roast in the oven as well. They go very well with a roast dinner as a side trimming, or you could uh, boil them up, shell them, and then with the nuts, you could mash it up when it's soft and add that to some sort of stuffing with herbs. Once shelled and boiled a bit so they turn soft, I've actually enjoyed these in a sweet curry with slices of apple as well, and that's been a really nice way to enjoy these. And of course you can just eat them raw as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you shell them first. So how does this haul compare to last year? Well, I think I got a few more of the larger nuts last year than I'm seeing this year. Um, that's probably something to do with weather. It could be time of year is ever so slightly different. It could be that the squirrels are very much more prolific this year. There's lots of factors at play. 
but even if you don't get a lot of the wild food you're looking for and with the nuts it can be a bit of a search and the same goes for mushrooms as well the reward is all the greater when you do get some good stuff and I'll be very pleased about putting these five chestnuts into our meal tonight. As they say, it's not always about the destination, it's about the journey. And foraging is all about that outdoor experience and that quality time in nature. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 